Hey everyone, it is TK Friday, my favorite day of the week, it's true. Today, TK8 visits Prague. Join me on today's journey for more fun with TK8. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Hey, it's TK Friday, can you believe it? Let's have some fun today. We're going to take a journey to Prague. I have an image for you to download. It's a stock image. I'll leave a link in the description below this video. I also have notes again for you today. If you're enjoying the notes, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions about them. The more I work with these notes, the more they're evolving. So what I'm doing now, I'm doing things a little different. I'm just showing you an icon for each of the buttons that you're going to click as you're working along with me okay in other words this is a select sky icon then you're going to save it as a channel and this is just showing you we're going to call it sky we're going to then invert it we're going to come here and save it again this time we're going to call that inverted selection the foreground and then we're going to remove the selection so i think they make a lot of sense you read from left to right okay the next step is you know i love balance and contrast I'm going to do a balance and contrast in the foreground, and this is my notes. Again, you'll start at the left with a luminosity mask. You're going to use a mids three. You're going to use a mask calculator. You get the get the idea right, and then you follow it to the right, and then come down below and follow it that way. I think it's going to be really easy. I recommend watch the video first, and then maybe try doing the edit just by the notes themselves. I think it'll really help. Now, here's the original stock image that you'll be downloading and. What I did was I did a 16 by 9 crop on it. It's up to you whether you want to crop it or not, but I kind of like the crop, so I'll be working with the crop here. Either way, follow my notes. It'll all work out for you. I recently had a comment, and somebody was asking me if I had like a primer for like the TK8 plugin because they were having a hard time wrapping their head around the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. And I really don't, but my philosophy is I'm showing you every week TK Friday videos new images each week and I try to do full edits on each one of these images and this way it really helps you to build on your skill set by using the TK plugin for Photoshop and I did suggest to this person like please just watch the TK Friday videos every video you're going to pick up new things a lot of things will be the same but you'll learn new things and hopefully as time goes on, you'll be like, yes, I totally understand how to work with the TK plugin for Photoshop. And also you can go to the Tony Kuiper Photo web store and there you're going to be able to purchase the TK plugin for Photoshop, get free linear profiles. And there's a bunch of really good training videos here from Sean Bagshaw. So there's a bunch of ways of learning TK8, but I think TK Fridays is a really good way of learning. And I want to tell you about a special sale that's going on right now till the end of July. When you use my promo code DK15, it normally gives you 15% off your entire purchase. But from now to the end of July, that DK15 will give you 20% off your entire purchase. So take advantage of that if you need to get anything from the Tony Kuiper Photo Web Store. When you use my promo code DK15, I make a small commission, and that helps me to keep these TK Friday videos coming your way. The first thing I want to do is save out the sky and save out the foreground as a channel. So let's come here and click on this icon, and that allows Photoshop to select the sky for us. Now, if we click right here, we can save that as a channel. I'm calling mine Sky. Click OK. And now we need to invert that by clicking this icon right under the save icon. And that inverts our selection. And now we can click the save icon and save it and click OK. And now you'll notice down here in my channels palette, I have a sky and a foreground living. And now I have a selection. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect it by clicking this icon right here. And I like to call that first step setting myself up for success. It's fun to give things little names sometimes. I'm going to click this icon right here. I'm going to grab a mids three and I'm going to click on the mass calculator. I want to work on the foreground. So what I want to do is subtract out the sky. So let me go ahead and click the minus. I'm going to click the X to X out of this. Now I want to come to my channels and I want to select the sky and then we'll click equals. It's going to make a calculation. And there you can see I have my foreground minus the sky. Pretty cool. Wouldn't you say? Now that I've created my mask, I need to output it, so I'm going to output it to a color grading tool. 
This image is kind of low contrast, so the first thing I want to do is click on shadows and darken up those shadows a little bit right about there. Now we'll go to midtones. And I thought with midtones, I'd pull them back just slightly to about here. And let's warm them up a bit. Use as much as you want. Just a little bit of warmth. Check this out. Here's the before and here's the after. But look at that little warmth in there. And we're not affecting the sky, which is really nice. And now I'm going to go to highlights and just uh, open up the highlights just a little bit. Somewhere right around here. And now here is my before and after. And that's my first adjustment that I like to call balance and contrast. To me, it's a starting point. And now let's add some balance and contrast to the sky. So let's exile this color grading tool. Let's come up to luminosity mask. Let's go back to a mids three mask calculator. I'll subtract X out of here, go to my channels. But instead of subtracting the sky, let's do the foreground. And now we'll click equals. And now you'll notice we just have the sky. What the midtones three mask does is just protects you from clipping highlights and shadows when you're adjusting your color grading tool and now we need to output it we'll output it to a color grading tool and this time i'm only going to work with the midtones i want to darken that sky up a little bit in the midtones to maybe right about here and let's give them a little bit more blue so i'm going to use the color grading tool just to give me a little bit more blue up there now it's added some blue into the shadow areas i'll take care of that in a little bit Let's take a look at the overall before and after. I'm going to click my before and after action. Here's the before and here is the after. What a big difference. Now, I really recommend this for all of your images, especially if you use linear profiles because they have much less contrast in them. And this first adjustment will really help you to bring that balance and contrast into your image. But no matter what I'm processing, I always do balance and contrast first. I highly recommend it. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of great actions inside the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. So let's open up actions. And I used this one on my last week's video. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try it on today's video as well. And that is this one called Soft Pop. So let's go ahead and click it. And right off the bat, take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. But I love the pop. I love the detail and the color pop. It just really looks nice. And if you feel it's too strong, you can either adjust the fill or the opacity. Now, if you need more of the effect, you're going to work with the fill. Just drag it to the right. And I don't recommend going over 20, but I'm happy with the look of it just the way it is. The next step is to just soften these clouds a little bit with a reverse clarity action. Let's just come here to the TK actions and find clarity. Click on this. And all you have to do is adjust your high pass first. And for me, I went to like around 40 pixels. Anywhere in there will be fine. Even 44, I'm going to click OK. And what we need to do is invert it. So there's an icon right here in the TK8 CX or combo panel. Click this. And now it's made our entire image very dreamy looking. If that's the look you're looking for, you may want that. But I don't. I just want it in the sky. So we have this handy little icon right here, this button. Click this and it lets you apply anything you save down here in your channels. Like we save the sky in the foreground. So let's apply it to the sky by clicking this button right here. Isn't this handy? And look, now it's only affecting the sky. Here is the before and here's the after. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can really see this. Here's the before and here is the after. Now it's affecting these buildings back here a little bit, but I'll show you how we can take care of that. Let's go up to the TK8 multi mass panel. Now right now you see the color grading tool. Just click the X and that makes that go away. And what we need to do is click this icon right here. This is a very special icon for layer mask mode. Click it. And what it lets you do, it enables you to work on your layer mask. And to see your layer mask, click the double arrow icon. And there's your layer mask. Now I'm zoomed way in. Let me zoom out. But what I want to do is work on this area here. When Photoshop made the sky selection, it made this area come in a little bit here. The lighter areas will get slight effect. This mask was fine for my balance and contrast, but not so much for reverse clarity. It makes the buildings too soft. Now we're in layer mask mode and we have all these handy tools here. I'm going to be using the burn tool, the dodge tool, and possibly the black brush tool. Okay, so I'm going to grab the burn tool and the settings are set at 50% exposure and for shadows and watch I can just paint over here and darken this up. Isn't this great? Okay, so I can come and paint the whole thing in here 
I'm going to go ahead and do this quick and then I'll just touch it up and get back to you. But then I can go with the dodge tool, which is right here. And it's set for highlights, exposure 50%. And I can clean up the areas in the sky up here, just like this. Okay. And I'll continue to work across here and get this all cleaned up. And then I'll get the burn tool again and I'll come back in and get some of these areas again and play with this. And then if I need to, I'll get the black brush and touch up some of these areas with 100% opacity and just touch some of these up. So let me go ahead and do that. And you know what I'm doing and I'll get right back with you. So I went ahead and finished it up. And if I click this double arrow, you can see that's what it looks like. And I'll show you before and after. But when you're done with this tool, just click this X here. Here's before the clarity action and here's after. Now let me go ahead and zoom into these buildings up in here just so you can see. Here is the before and here is the after. But you see, we still have nice detail back in these buildings back here. But don't forget that layer mask mode. This is really helpful. I forget about this sometimes. If you watch my TK Friday videos, you know my editing philosophy is to look for issues. Now, an issue I see next is kind of back here in the distance. It looks a little bit hazy back in here. I'd like to clean up some of the haze, but guess what? We have a dehaze action. So let's come to TK Actions and find dehaze, which is right here, and click on it. Now, all I'm going to do here is hide this dehaze group. To hide that group, just come here and click on this black mask icon, and it hides that dehaze group. And then grab yourself a white brush at 100% opacity, 0% hardness, and then adjust your brush size accordingly. I'm going to get a brush size around here. You don't want it too large because we're going to, we might get close to the sky. If it goes a little into the sky, not a problem because of that soft edge. And we're just going to paint away any areas of haze, just like so. And over in this area here and back in here, we don't want this area to feel left out. And I think we've got it. But remember that soft edge will really work out well along the skyline there. Now let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. Now right now, this is a group. And for my next step, I want to work on the sky up in here. It's a little bit too uh, blue in the clouds. And I told you that earlier, I was going to take care of that somewhere down the line. I'm going to do that next. But whenever you have a group here, it's important that you close this group because if you don't, my next step will end up being inside that group. And I don't want that because that will be an issue. So you want to make sure you do close that group. Now, I only want to work in the sky, so let's come up to my channels and click on sky because that's what we're working on. Now, I'm going to use a mass calculator, so let's click on the mass calculator. I'm going to do an intersection, so click on this X. Let's get out of here and click X again here. And now we're going to make that calculation, but we're going to use a zone mask for this. So click on this zone mask icon. And I'm going to sample this area of cloud right here because remember, I want to remove the uh, some of that blue saturation from here. Click OK. Now we can adjust it. I'm going to tweak it a bit. I'm going to take this slider and drag it into the left. I always call this tighten and lighten. So I'm going to drag this in to right around here. And I want to lighten next and drag this brightness slider and drag it up to somewhere right around there. And then we have to click equal to make the calculation. And now we have the adjustment only on the sky. The light areas will be affected. Now we need to output this. Let's output this to a hue saturation adjustment layer so we can adjust the saturation. And now watch, I can take that saturation and pull it right off of those darker cloudy areas. Now I may not take it off the whole way, but just a little bit. I think of my notes, I had it to like a minus 40, but I made a little stronger selection here. So I think I'm gonna go to like a minus 33. Let's do a before and after by clicking on the eyeball of this layer. Here's the before and here is the after. And yeah, that takes the edge off pretty nice. I believe in my notes I had that to a minus 40, but I think a minus 33 is going to work here. I'm going to close this properties panel. Now, just to reiterate, if I want to close this group, it would have put this adjustment inside the group. And as you can see, that group would have hid the adjustment because that mask is hiding the top portion of the image. So that's important. Don't forget to close that group. All right, back to troubleshooting. See all these uh, chimneys and lighter areas of some of these buildings here? They feel a little too light to me, so I want to just dull those down a little bit. To do that, 
we're going to grab a curves adjustment layer and I'm only using it for a blend mode so we can get out of the properties. When you want to do general darkening, a great blend mode is multiply. It just overall darkens the entire image in a really nice way. Now I want to hide this. So I'm going to click on the black mask icon on the CX or combo panel that hides that adjustment. And now we need to create a mask. Now remember, I want to target these light areas. Now you could use a luminosity mask or a zone mask. I tried both, but it ended up being the zone mask giving me a better result. But try them both. Experiment. Try the zone, try the luminosity mask, and see which works the best for you. But let's use zone. And I'm going to find this light area right here in this chimney that represents all the light areas pretty well. And I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to do my tighten and lighten. I'm going to drag the slider to the left to over right around in here and see how it really targets those areas. And now I want to lighten it. I'm going to take this brightness slider and drag it the whole way over to the right. And that's making a really nice selection. I want to output this to a black mask, painting through a selection with a white brush. So we're going to click on this icon right here because I only want to apply that to where I want to apply it. And you can see the selection indicator lets me know that we have a selection. Now let's go ahead and paint away those areas that are too light. So I'm going to make my brush around this size right here. And look, I'm just going to paint at 100% opacity any light area that I think. Even this building right here, I may tone it down a little bit. You know, why not? Okay, and we can just paint over these areas. And again, I'm at 100% opacity and just tone them down a little bit. Even some of these chimneys over in here, down in here, down here, you get the drift, but just paint away. And for the purpose of the video, I think that's pretty good. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. Now let's take a look at the mask. If we click the double arrow icon, we can see that's what I painted. But you see how nicely it has selected those areas? Click this again and we can see the image back. Now we have a selection here, so it's important that we remove this selection because we want to do something different next. So click this icon to remove that selection. The next thing I like to do is apply contrast just to certain areas, so I'll apply some local contrast. All the buildings back in here, I would like to add a little bit of contrast and some warm contrast. So I'm going to use another TK action. So let's come to the TK actions and open them up and let's go to paint contrast. This is a really good action. I'm going to start back in this area. So I'm going to sample one of these warmer tones like on this roof right here and click OK. Now you'll notice we're in a hard mix blend mode at a fill of 15%. This is all set up for you in the action, by the way. I'm going to get a smaller brush size, maybe right around here with a very soft edge. I want an opacity to start off with at about 50%. So I'm going to type my five key and I'm going to see if I can paint some warm contrast. Look at that. Isn't that nice? I was going to say, isn't that cool? But you know, it is cool, but it's warm actually. But nice warm contrast. Isn't that beautiful right back in here? and over in here and back over in here. But check this out. Here is the before and here's the after. Now, if it's too strong, you can pull this opacity back or you can pull the fill back. Or if you want it stronger, you can even take the fill and drag it up more. But then we could find other little areas here. And what, what you want to do is like on these warmer areas, like right in here, I'm going to take my opacity down to about 20%. And look, I can just paint over these areas. I may go up to 30%. And try that. Yeah, even in here, warm this up. And it adds contrast as we go, even on this roof back in here in this building. But you could just find any area that you want to add some of that contrast to. And this warm contrast works nice. Look how it just brings some pop of color back up in there. And I can paint over in here, maybe on this building and back in here. But take your time and find areas that you want to paint. But let's take a look here. Here is the before. And here is the after. Again, before and after. Let me go ahead and zoom in to like, like some of these buildings back up in here. So take a look at this building right here. Here's the before and here's the after. But you see that nice pop of contrast. I'm going to click this icon to go back to fit the screen. That is paint contrast, but take your time and go over different areas. Like you could even sample different colors. Like I'm going to sample this green and make my brush smaller and I'm just going to paint on that. There's a little pink in here. I can paint on that. Here's some yellows paint on that. Grab this roof color and paint on that. And again, you can increase your 
brush opacity if you want a stronger effect. Then you see this tree down here, it's green, so I'm gonna sample that color. Hold your option roll key down and sample that color. And look, I can just paint contrast on that. And like this is a browner tone, so I can click here and paint some of that brown contrast on there. Here's some green in the grass, I can paint in here. It's pretty forgiving though, even if I, let's see if I painted green up in here, it would still make this darker brown too. It, it you know, it doesn't do a bad job. You don't have to always get the color just 100% right. If you're having adverse effects, then you may want to resample and then hit it again with a different color, okay? But some of that warm tone in here will look really nice as well. Before I move on, I'm going to go ahead and hide this layer. I, I, in my mind, I feel some of you are asking, how does this paint contrast really work, Dave? And I, I'm going to take a second to explain it to you. Let me grab another paint contrast layer. And the color picker comes up and it's defaulted at 50% gray. So let's take that and click OK. Now for basic contrast adjustments, your black brush, your white brush, and your 50% gray brush are great. For a normal contrast adjustment, the 50% gray is great. I'm going to leave it at 100% so you can really see it. So areas that are darker will get darker. Areas that are lighter will get lighter. As you can see, here's the before and here's the after. So that's 50% gray. Now the black brush is good if you just want to affect shadow. So let me click on the black brush. I'm going to cut my opacity now down to about 50%. And now I'll paint on darker areas and see how darker areas are getting darker, but the lighter areas are not getting affected really. Okay, so here's the before and here is the after. Now with the white brush, if I click on the white brush and I'm still at 50%, it's only gonna make the light areas go lighter. So you have different ways you can go. Or as I did in my adjustment, I was working with color because remember back here, I wanted to warm these stones up. I'm gonna make the brush a little bit smaller and I'm gonna sample, remember I sampled that like a roof color back in here, like right up in here, a warmer tone. And now at that 50%, I was able to add that nice warm contrast back in here. Let me go ahead and delete this layer because I don't need it. I'm gonna click on the trash can. Let's turn my paint contrast layer back on. Now, just to reiterate, if you want basic contrast, if you want to paint contrast on, use the paint contrast action. Use 50% gray for just normal contrast where the lights and darks are being affected. Use a black brush if you only want to affect darker tones. Use a white brush if you only want to affect light tones. Use a color brush if you want to affect colors with your contrast. But that's how it works. And I wanted to clear that up because I felt I didn't really explain that. And so now I have. We're almost done. Two more things I need to do. One is to lighten up the midtones. Let's click on the luminosity mask icon. I want to do midtones. I'm going to do midtones one. I want to output this to a curves adjustment layer. I'm only using it for a blend mode so we can shut the properties panel, change your blend mode to screen to lighten everything up. Now check it out. Here is the before and here is the after, but you see how that nicely just lightens up the midtone. If that's too strong, take the opacity back, but I'm going to leave it up just so you can really see what it's doing. If you look at my notes, it shows that I pulled that opacity back to 55%, but Again, for the video, I'm gonna leave it here. The last thing I wanna do is add a simple vignette back to the TK Actions and just grab the first action, which is a vignette. I'm gonna take the Gaussian Blur default setting, click OK. I'm gonna protect the shadows with Blend Diff, so I'm gonna double click right here and come to the underlying layer, hold my Option or Alt key down and just drag this slider and split this apart just to protect the shadows. And I think right here looks good and I'm gonna click OK. Here is the before and here is the after. And then I'm gonna take my opacity, I think it's a little strong, I'm gonna drag this down to 30%. Here is the before and here is the after. So a vignette with shadow protection. Now let's see where we've come from, from start to finish. Let me click my before and after action. Here is where we started. And here is where we end up at. So I'm really happy with this. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Hey, if you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.